Hey guys, my name is Joe and I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to thank you for tuning into my channel tonight. Tonight we're going to be focused on the southeastern skies, looking into the Virgo constellation. Specifically, we're going to look at a string of galaxies known as the Markarian chain. Let's take a couple of moments, let me introduce it to you, and then we'll get started capturing. Okay, I've got Stellarium open. I want to show you a little bit about this object real quick. You'll notice this is the constellation Virgo down here. And as we zoom in, you begin to see a lot of little red circles show up. Those are all galaxies, and they are part of what's known as the uh, Virgo supercluster. As we zoom in, we begin to see Markarian's chain begin to show up. And I've got it set up, so I've got this little red box set up. This is actually my imaging box. This takes my camera and my telescope into consideration and it's a kind of a cool little feature of Stellarium to be able to center up and figure out exactly what you want, how you want to frame your picture. And then you can go over here and get the RA and declination, enter that into astrophotography tools and it will put you right in the center, right where this uh, uh, cross is, is exactly where the center of my image will show up. And so this is what my image is going to look like. This is M84 and M85. These are both elliptical galaxies. That's why they don't have that typical spiral look to them. They're elliptical. Also here, and this is what I want to make sort of the uh, central portion of my picture. I'm actually going to set the center off just slightly uh, off-centered here, is what's known as the eyes. And these are two elliptical galaxies that have gotten so close to each other in the past that they've begun to gravitationally interact. And you can kind of see that uh, one galaxy is pulling off gas and matter off of the other. And you'll notice there's quite a few uh, galaxies in this picture. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, galaxies right here in this one picture. And so that's what we're going to look for tonight. That's what we're going to try to aim at. Okay, it is about 9.03 p.m., and I am um, about ready to show you the first image in this imaging session. I've already uh, plate solved and got everything lined up. You'll see here that uh, in my initial uh, setup uh, photos, these were just short 30-second photos, I've got Markarian's chain lined up, M84 and M85. Here are the um, eyes. Um, galaxies. Of course, it stretches on down through here. You'll see a couple of the smaller galaxies. And um, everything's running pretty good right now. I've got the camera cooled down to minus 10 degrees. Um, and the first image will be coming up here in just a moment. And we'll get to take a look at it and see how it's going. And we'll check out our guiding as well and uh, see how this first image is going. Okay, here's the first image. You can see there, uh, we see a little of the detail there in the uh, eyes galaxies. And um, you can see that it's not too bad of an image. You can see a couple of the other. There's M84 and M85. Uh, there are the smaller galaxies that are around the ellipticals. There's uh, the spiral galaxies that, you know, sort of kind of set to the outside. It's dithering right now. I dither on every single frame. Uh, when I'm, I'm shooting three-minute images. My guiding is not the best, quite frankly. There's a little bit of wind out right now, and um, I'm hoping that this will settle out a little bit. I've been having some, some guiding issues, and I've got to get those worked out. But basically, uh, that's what we're looking at right now. It doesn't look like it's too bad. I'll be back in a little bit when it's time to do the Meridian Flip. Okay, I have just finished doing my initial stacks, and I want to show you what I've gotten. First thing I want to do is open up Astro Pixel Processor. I'll show you here that I've, I've stacked 78 lights, 30 flats, 82 darks, 49 biases. And this is the 
image with nothing else done to it hasn't had any other touch-ups or any other work done on it but you can kind of see the stack that I got out of this um, just out of curiosity I went ahead and went over to deep sky stacker and took the same data and put it in here and um, in all honesty I think that what I've got out of Deep Sky Stacker, you can't really see it here, um, but is actually a little bit better. And so what I'm going to end up doing is, when I go over to Photoshop, here, here's a good, a better example of that. Again, this is not color balanced or anything like that. Um, but I actually think there's less noise in this image. And actually, uh, because of the way it's stacked, I've got rid of some of the the uh, satellite lines and those kind of things that were in the uh, Astro Pixel processor uh, data. So when I go over to Photoshop, this is what I'm going to use. Generally, I use Astro Pixel processor, but I've heard several people say that the stacking algorithm for Deep Sky Stacker is actually a little bit better. I don't know out of experience that that's true, but what I think I'm going to start doing is stacking my images in both programs and then kind of comparison. I think for this particular image, the Deep Sky Stacker has actually done a little bit better job. Okay, here's my picture after I did my initial stretch in Photoshop. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run two quick little um, add-on programs in. I'm going to run Hasta La Vista Green. And I'm going to also run Astro Pixel Pro, or not um, Astro Flat Pro. Flatten the picture out a little bit. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to try to get just maybe a little bit more of the detail uh, in this area right here. So I'm going to I'm going to go over to my curves. I'm going to use the little selection tool. Come down here with the eyedropper, drop it in the spot, and I'm going to pull that up just a tad. And that may have got a little bit more detail out of there. And I'm going to go over. Oops. I'm going to go over to the levels uh, right here and I'm going to pull that that over just a tad. All right. That's about all the detail I'm going to get out of this picture. Um, one thing I can do is go over here to filter, camera raw. Whoops, I've got to flatten this first. I got to go over here, flatten the image, then go up here to my camera raw. A couple of things that I can do here is I could pull up the saturation. You know, notice that that starts bringing out some of the star color a little bit more, and maybe even bring up the vibrance just a tad. Um, I could play around with bringing the whites up just a tad, see if I can't get. This little bit, of, this little area of nebulosity to pop up just a little bit more. Um, again, it, there's only a limited amount you can do with the data. And again, this did not give me quite the detail that I hoped that it would. I'll draw over the clarity and dehaze button just slightly. And you'll see that made a little bit of improvement. This is the area that I'm really trying to bring in, make it pop out a little bit more. And... Um, all right, let me go over here. I can go over to luminance and I can get rid of some of the uh, the noise, the, the under noise reduction, and also draw out a little bit of the color noise reduction, and I'll get a little bit a little bit of uh, a little bit better picture there. I can bring up the color detail and see if that'll bring it up. I don't want to wash these out. These elliptical galaxies are all new to me. I'm not really, really good at processing them. And so I, 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 there's not a lot of detail in an elliptical galaxy, but it seems to me I don't want to blow that middle out too much either. So uh, again, there's, there's a limit, only a limited amount that I can do with the data. So that kind of shows you where I'm heading with this. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more. I'll be back in just a minute to show you the final picture.
All right, what I've got on tap next week is to show you a way to take your lunar imaging up a step. As every astrophotographer has done, I started out my imaging of, you know, in astrophotography, taking images of the moon. Here's a, a good example of, you know, a large section of the moon, a crescent moon that I've taken. I've also taken close-ups of the moon. You can see here a close-up of the moon. Um, another example here would be another close-up of the moon, taking pictures of of you know smaller sections and in detailing the craters last summer because of the 50th anniversary of apollo 11 i even got into finding the various um, landing sites for the apollo sites but here recently i decided to try something different i want to show you this i decided to process my images lunar images in color and this has really been a fun and exciting thing to do. And what I want to do next week is show you how, if you're taking images, color images of the moon, how you can process in Photoshop the very images that you've all been taking very along in black and white and how you can bring out the color. And so that's what we've got on tap for next week. I hope you'll tune in. Please be sure to follow this, uh, my YouTube channel, and also consider sharing it with your friends and letting them know about it as well. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for tuning in.